It came upon the midnight clear, sang the first, second, and last stanza. Please be standing. <laughs> Saturday, December 17th, not Friday, December 16th, that was uh, released. Uh, so again, that is Saturday the 17th from 5.30 to 8. Uh, this is open for anyone. It doesn't have to be just church members. Uh, our uh, annual live activity will be next Sunday, December 18th from 5 to 7. The sign-up sheet is in the vestibule. If you have not signed up, please do. Um, I know there's still some openings. My family is going to take whatever's left to fill in, so then we're going to be good. Uh, December 21st, there will be no Wednesday night service. Our Christmas Eve candlelight service uh, will be on a, the Christmas Eve from 5 to 5.30. Uh, if you've never attended that, uh, you really, you're really missing out. It's a, it's a really good blessing. and It's a good way to kind of start off the festivities. 
uh, Christmas Day on Sunday, uh, we'll have worship service at 4 o'clock. That way everybody can get through the chaos of the mornings. Uh, December 28th. And that, and that is the one service that day. Yes. I've had some people asking for clarification. Yeah. Only at 4 o'clock. Amen. That's right. Uh, there'll be no Wednesday night service on the 28th. Uh, that's between Christmas and New Year's. And then January 1st, uh, New Year's Day worship service will be 11 o'clock. There'll be no Sunday school that day. And as always, if you or your family or someone needs anything or needs ministering, uh, notify any of the deacons or Brother Danny. Uh, that's why we're here. And then December birthdays are listed. No one's today. I mean, I'm sure most of you are aware, but one year ago today, uh, things got really crazy in Warren County. So um, it's looking back from where we were then to where we are now, it's... It's amazing how strong our community is. And Plano is a big part of that as well. Do we have any prayer requests? Uh, Bob Davenport is having surgery this week. Tara, can you tell me the day again? It's on Friday. 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 So keep him in your prayers this week. Is there anybody else? I have one. I think at this time of the year, with all the stress and everything that's going on, we sometimes take for granted the work that Brother Danny does. And here lately, we've had a lot of death and so forth in the church. And he's been under a lot of stress, and a lot of times we do not remember him and his family in prayer like we should. Any other prayer requests or praises? Uh, Linda Creek's uh, stepdaughter, Nancy Creek, is in the hospital and some of Thank you for all those that prayed for my family. We uh, we had a RSV and two cases of walking pneumonia within a 10 day period. So it was a great time. <laughs> So we're we're all through it. Everybody's feeling good, and hopefully that'll be the end of it for us. But thank you. All. If there's no others, you can join me in prayer, please. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day that you have blessed us with, Lord. We just thank you for this church family. We thank you for this building that you allow us to come to and worship you. Lord. We're just asking you with all the prayer requests, those mentioned, those not mentioned, Lord, you know everyone's heart and needs. We just ask you to lead God and direct us throughout the week, bring us back safely, and all these things in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Good morning and Merry Christmas. Oh, before I say anything else, Billy, you threw me for a loop today. I was expecting to go right into that third verse and you hit the second and I was like, <laughs> caught me off guard, man, caught me off guard. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Danny Pace. I'm the pastor here at Plano Baptist Church and it's a blessing to have you this morning, especially if you are a guest. It's so good to have you. I'm so blessed by your presence. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Grab your Bibles, folks, and turn to the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 19, to be exact. Luke chapter 19. It's a well-known, well-loved passage. Most of you are familiar with it. Uh, last week we were in the Old Testament, this week we're in the New Testament. You never know where we're going to be in this sermon series, which I like. Uh, which brings us to the topic of our sermon series for December. We are continuing our holiday series, Christmas at the Movies. Christmas at the Movies. I say that we're continuing, uh, not simply because we started this last week, but we actually reinstituted it last week. We started this series back in 2020, but we took a break from it last year, uh, trying to keep things new and fresh you know keep you on your toes uh, this series we are looking at famous holiday classics and what we're trying to do attempting to do is to find spiritual truth in those classic films a takeaway a biblical truth for all of us in the series so far we looked at the Santa Claus starring Tim Allen we looked at Elf we looked at It's a Wonderful Life and last week we introduced the series with a Christmas story, a Christmas story. If you were here last week, I was incredibly tired, and I apologize. It was, it was, you could tell, couldn't you? You guys were being so gracious last week, but you could tell I wasn't on it last week. Last week, we talked about a Christmas story. Little Ralphie wants nothing more than a Red Ryder air rifle, and he's eager to grow up and have that Christmas rifle more than anything else. Really, 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 really bad. He wants it, right? And even though he's been told that he might shoot his eye out he has to have it and so last week last week talking about a Christmas story we actually talked about first Samuel we looked at the Christmas story to talk about first Samuel and how the children of Israel weren't so different 
and neither are we. The Israelites wanted a king, even though God told them that it would be their downfall, uh, but they didn't care. They were running from God, and they were wanting to put their trust in men. They were wanting to trust in themselves, and so they wanted a king really, really, really bad. God gave them what they wanted, and the children of Israel never recovered from it. And the same thing happens to us sometimes. We get to wanting something, something so bad, something that we know isn't really good for us, even though God warns us, but we want it. We want it so desperately bad that we're willing to dismiss God to get it. And then guess what? We end up shooting our eye out. As I said last week, sometimes there is no worse an outcome than getting exactly what we want. Sometimes there is no worse an outcome than getting exactly what we want. But this week, it's a new text and a new movie. We're in Luke chapter 19. So let's begin our passage with verse 1. Luke entered, or Luke entered. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through, and a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy, and he wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was so short, he couldn't see him over the crowd. And so he ran ahead and he climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, and since Jesus was coming that way. And when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. And so he came down at once, and he welcomed him gladly. And all the people saw this, and they began to mutter amongst themselves, He's gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up, and he said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Pray with me. Father, Lord, it is a blessing to be able to gather in your house. It's a blessing to be able to, gra- to gather with brothers and sisters, Lord, and just to be able to sing your praise. It's, it's a blessing to be able to be here during this particular holiday season and just give you praise for all of your goodness, give you praise for your Son, Father God, to sing words that can become just so passe because they're Christmas carols we sing all the time, but to look at those words and to think about what we are singing, the celebration that we are putting forth, Lord, that you cared enough for this creation to send your son to pay the penalty of our sin, something we couldn't do for ourselves, but God, you did. You did it through your son, and we praise you, Father. Praise you. Father, I praise you more than anything that your son wasn't just born And that we're remembering that during this holiday season, but that specifically your son was born so that he might die. And he died so that he might be resurrected. And so, Father God, we praise you. We praise you not just simply because a baby was born, but we praise you because he took the sin that we that we were responsible for, and he took it to a cross. And through his resurrection has given us hope for eternal life. That is our celebration. That is why we praise the birth of a child. And Father God, we give you all the glory and praise. In your name, amen. Amen. All right. Let's see if you guys can figure out today's Christmas movie with just a few simple words. Finish this lyric. Are you ready? You're a mean one. Oh, you did not let me down. I was so, so scared. I was like, what if I do this and they just look at me like I'm crazy? I'm going to be so disappointed. Oh, you're a good church. You're a good church. Now, before we think too much about the Grinch film, let's talk about the one we're talking about. All right? Now, remember, we're only dealing with the classics. And as far as the Grinch is concerned, there is only one true Grinch classic. And that is the 1966 animated film, How the Grinch Stole... Wow, we're about to split a church. (laughs) I got some amens on one side, and the other side's looking at me like, hmm, watch what you say, Pastor. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You remember that cartoon? Uh, It's a cartoon that both thrilled me and terrified me as a child all at the same time. And it should because it was narrated by none other than Boris 
Karloff, Boris Karloff. You might remember him. He's the, the guy behind those black and white horror classics, Frankenstein and The Mummy and The Raven. Uh, this holiday special was based on the book by Dr. Seuss, written in 1957. And it tells the story of the Grinch, this rude, unsociable Scrooge who attempts to ruin Christmas for all the inhabitants of... Whoville, Whoville, Whoville. It's still shown every single Christmas. And some have called it the greatest holiday cartoon ever made, which means Charlie Brown is out of luck again. <laughs> Poor Charlie Brown. Poor Charlie Brown. Let's look at this clip. Luke chapter 19. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through, and a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. And he was a chief tax collector and he was wealthy and he wanted to see who Jesus was. But because he was so short, he couldn't see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and he climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. To get a better understanding of the Grinch, I want to read to you an excerpt from Seuss historian Charles Cohen. A historian of Seuss, can you imagine such a thing? I mean, is that a four-year degree? I don't know. But he wrote this. What the Grinch hates most of all isn't the presence. What he specifically hates most of all is when the Who's all get together and hold hands and sing. Because what that represents is that he's an outsider to their community. I'd say that quote doesn't just give us a better understanding of the Grinch. It gives us a better understanding of Zacchaeus. You know the story about Zacchaeus. You, you know all about him. He, he's a Jewish tax collector. He's rich and he's short. He's a wee little man, the song says. Uh, but if you read between the lines, there's so much more going on here. It says that Zacchaeus was a tax collector, which means he was a traitor. A traitor. The Roman Empire demanded heavy taxes from the Jewish people and they would hire enforcers from within the Jews themselves to carry this out and to collect those taxes. And because of this, the Jewish men were viewed as traitors to the Jewish people. They were helping the Roman government keep them in bondage. And since they were traitors to the Jews, they were traitors to God. They were sinners of the highest order. It tells us that Zacchaeus was rich he was wealthy. As a tax collector, Zacchaeus was paid well, but he wouldn't necessarily have been rich, so to speak. That tells us something. In order for him to be rich, it could only mean one thing. He wasn't just a traitor, he was also a thief. A thief. So he's been collecting a higher tax rate than the Romans actually require, and he's skimming some off of the top. He's stealing from his own people. A thief, a traitor, and he's short. <laughs> Some of you guys are like, wait a minute. <laughs> I, listen, I'm not that tall either. <laughs> what does a height have to do with anything? Well, height isn't the issue, but it's contributing to the problem. Because see, because of Zacchaeus' height, he can't see Jesus over the crowd of people. And so he climbs up into a sycamore tree. And the area around a sycamore fig tree was considered unclean by any respectable Jew. Why? Because the pigs would gather around the base of that tree and they would eat these figs that fell there onto the ground. And pigs, and obviously pig droppings, were all considered unclean by the Jews. They would have had nothing to do with it. They would have stayed clear from those things. But Zacchaeus doesn't care. He was already despised by the people. What did pigs matter? He was so far removed from his people, so far removed from his faith, that the laws of God didn't matter anymore. They were nothing to him anymore. He was a lot like the Grinch. Remember the Grinch? That's who we're talking about also. He and Zacchaeus' hearts had both grown two sizes too small. What did the who? What did the who? What did the Seuss? It's going to be hard to keep some of these things straight when you're talking about Dr. Seuss. What did the Seuss historian write? He said, what the Grinch hated most was when all of the who's got together to hold hands and to sing because it reminded him that he was an outsider, rejected, hated, 
despised. Even if a lot of that had to do with his own choices. But all of that would change. Grinch, Zacchaeus, they would meet someone who would treat them like they'd never been treated before. They would meet somebody who would treat them with love and kindness. Grinch would meet little Cindy Lou Who. And Zacchaeus would meet Jesus. As the Grinch took the tree, as he started to shove, he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou Who, who was no more than two. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? He heard the, sm the small sound like that of a coo of a dove. That's an interesting way to describe her voice. Very interesting. Luke chapter 19. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. Interesting. No one has introduced these two. And yet, Jesus calls him by name. Zacchaeus come down immediately I must stay at your house today and so he came down at once and welcomed him gladly and all the people saw this and began to mutter he has gone to be the guest of a sinner throughout scripture the Holy Spirit is often symbolized as a dove a dove and of course the Holy Spirit being part of the Holy Trinity means that Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one and the same Jesus calls Zacchaeus by name and as he spoke aloud his name the sound or the breath of the Holy Spirit begin to move into the situation begin the work of transforming Zacchaeus's heart right there and then like the sound or the coo of a dove Jesus had noticed Zacchaeus where others had shunned him, hated him, despised him. Jesus saw him. How about you? Do you ever feel lost and stuck up in a tree? You ever feel like you just want to give up? You, you don't really care about what anyone thinks anymore. You don't really care about how people view you because things can't possibly get any worse than they already are. Or maybe, just maybe, you like the tree. You like it. It's peace. It's comfortable. It's easy to sit up there above everyone else and act as if you don't need anyone. To act as if you're not hurting. To act as if everything is okay and that there's no struggle. Zacchaeus probably said all of these things to himself. And yet, news of Jesus has him scrambling up a tree. Jesus. Maybe he wasn't as thick-skinned as he thought that he was. Maybe, maybe you aren't either. Maybe you're eager to catch a glimpse of Jesus too because you want to see if he's the real deal. And if so, I'm telling you, it's the coo of a dove. It's the coo of the dove. It's the Holy Spirit speaking to you, wooing you. It's the calling of the Holy Spirit beckoning you to come that Jesus wants to dine with you to sit with you Jesus went to Zacchaeus' home he rubbed elbows with him ate with him drank his sweet tea and the crowd thought it was scandalous they thought it was horrible when was the last time that your love for other people was so extravagant that people thought it was scandalous that people talked about it when was the last time you allowed Jesus to use you like that? Or maybe for some of you, are you willing to allow God to love you like that? Are you willing to let him in? Are you willing to let him come into your house to sit around your table? To invade your life and your family, your job, your school, your marriage, your relationships? Are you willing to surrender and allow him to come? Because he's calling you by name. We're often afraid of having a relationship with the, like this with God because we start to get worried about where it's going to take us. We start to get worried about what it's going to cost us. But if we allow God through Christ to love us and to correct us and to change us, it is life altering. Life altering. 
to borrow from Dr. Seuss, it can make even the smallest of hearts grow three sizes. Two. <laughs> Despite the Grinch's best efforts, Christmas came and it came just the same. And it changed the Grinch's life forever. It radically transformed him. And we can see how an encounter with Jesus transformed Zacchaeus. In Luke chapter 19, it says, But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Why, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? Jesus changed Zacchaeus' heart and changed his life, filled him with joy, which led to repentance, tangible repentance, not just words, but that you actually saw. And because this man, known for being a two-timing thief and a traitor, began setting things straight, he was saved. The old Zacchaeus was gone. The new Zacchaeus was here. He was now a lover of Jesus, a lover of people, a lover of life. And his heart grew three sizes that day. And you've got to know, Jesus can do that for you. Jesus can change you. If you trust him and surrender to him, he'll fill you with that same life-giving joy that Zacchaeus found, that the Grinch found. And your heart and your lips will be filled with repentance like the Grinch and Zacchaeus who had given back everything he had stolen. But it wasn't holiday cheer that led him to that. It was a meeting with Jesus. Zacchaeus' repentance was met with God's saving grace. He found salvation. To stretch the analogy, Zacchaeus saves the sleigh and drives it back into Whoville with a repentant heart. And Jesus declares that Zacchaeus has been forgiven. 9 and 10, verses 9 and 10, Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. He is a son of Abraham. That's what Jesus calls him. Specifically, Jesus says salvation has come to this house because this man is a son of Abraham. What does that mean? In other words, Jesus tells the crowd that Zacchaeus is no longer an enemy of God. He is no longer an outsider. He has been brought back into fellowship with the Father. He has been brought back into fellowship with God's people, God's chosen people, the people of the covenant, the people of the covenant that God made with Abraham and Jesus says I have come to seek and to save that which was lost Zacchaeus was lost spiritually and figuratively but then Jesus came along and he brought him back home Jesus said Zacchaeus you need to come home because I'm coming to your table But through Jesus, Zacchaeus found a place at the table. The enemy tries to convince us that we are outside of God's love, outside of his forgiveness. He throws all of our mistakes in our faces and he convinces us that we are worthless and we buy it. We buy the lie. But the good news of Jesus is, is that it reminds us that there is nowhere we can run that is too far from the love of Christ. Psalms chapter 139 says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I go from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light becomes night around me, even then the darkness will not be dark to you. You can isolate yourself up at the top of the mountain or you can climb to the top of the tree and Jesus still sees you. Jesus reminds me that he knows everything that I have ever done or thought or said and still he meets me with love and salvation. And it isn't just true for me. 
It's true for you. And it's true for each and every who. Pray with me. Father, you saw us when we were unlovely. You saw us when we thought we had nothing to offer. You saw us when all of our hopes were built up in material gain and wealth and all the things that the world wants to offer. But Lord, you saw us. You saw us in our scrambling up the tree. You called us by name. You loved us where others would not. You loved us when it was undeserving. Father God, we thank you for the gift of your son who beckons all of us to come and to sit with him and to have fellowship with him to dine with him. Father, we thank you that it is through your son that we are all offered the offered the incredible blessing of repenting and turning to you and trusting to you. Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you for your love. And I thank you that you love each and every one of us here in this room. And this morning I pray that if someone hasn't experienced that love or haven't reciprocated that love, that today might be the day that they would just totally surrender and they would listen for their name being called and when they would climb down from that tree and they would meet you. I pray that today in your name. Amen. As we stand and as we sing.